All right, I got here a 2014 Chevy Cruze. Customer complaint is it's a no crank. So a little backstory. The car had a head gasket done to it. Let me see, I'm gonna crank the key. Nothing. So the car had a head gasket done. It worked for like a week, and then after it stopped working. We should do a scan on this. See what we got. We got a bus pulling in, so it might be a little bit noisy. Okay, so here's the report. We have two codes in the cluster. Ambient air temperature sensor circuit, high voltage open, which we're not going to worry about. It's probably not plugged in. And then control module power circuit low voltage in the cluster passed and failed. So I don't know if it's a history code. I, I don't want to get sidetracked by that for now. But let's go first into the BCM. I just want to see some data of when we're cranking what's happening. So this is a sedan. It does not have start stop. Okay. Let's read data stream. Let's see what we can find. I need something on... I feel like immobilize the data. Okay, so let's just select everything. All right, unknown immobilizer allows engine to start. Valid, so it claims we don't, it's not an immobilizer issue. Password learn is inactive. Security code accepted is no. Immobilizer security code programmed, yes. Key type is a master key. Five master keys learned. They don't have any other ones, so. Um, primary key status is yeah. So I'm a little confused because it seems like it's saying that immobilizer allows engine to start is valid, but it also says that it's not accepting the master code. It's not accepting where is that immobilizer security code accepted is no. I have to put a charger on this. The, the voltage just dropped. Let me get it hooked up. All right, I hooked up my maintainer over here. So, this should be good. Let's see. Okay. So yeah, we got showing down the scan tool. Yep, 13 volts. Okay, good. Okay, master key, yes. Okay, I just want to go see what the crank data is in the engine to see if it's allowing it to stop, even if it sees our ignition switch. So let's go to read data stream. Electrical and immobilizer data. Okay, crank request signal. Authentication. Oh, just select everything. Let's see what we got here. Okay, crank request signal is at no. Let's crank it. And it changes to yes. So the computer is definitely saying, the BCM is telling the, the computer to crank it. Engine control module authentication style va valid. Engine control module challenge status is invalid. So something's wrong here. It's it's showing that it seems like the mobilizer is not on, but still somehow the code is mixed up between the like I think the way it works is the, the ignition switch turns on, it sends a code, the the it sends a the BCM reads the code in the key, sends it to the ECM who verifies the code, it sends it back to the BCM or the opposite, and then it starts. Yeah, so it sees the crank signal. Now, is it controlling the relay? Let's see if there's a PID for that. Mobilizer security code accepted, no. But at the same time, it says a mobilizer system status is release state. So I'm not really understanding these data PIDs. Start a relay command. Okay, this will tell us if the computer is trying to start it. I'm going to crank. And it stays off the whole time. Crank. Stays off. So the computer's not telling it to start. Alright, so I'm just going to look over the system quickly just to make sure it could start if I jump it. So I'm going to get a diagram. just want to look how the starting system's lined up. So, let's pull up a diagram for the starting system. All 
All right, what do we got? Here's the ignition switch, which gets ignition voltage from the body control module. It goes to the start. Now, this is the key signal coming from over here. So when you turn the key, it brings it off to the start, and it will, and it comes, it just gives a signal to the PCM, which on the serial data bus, I'm assuming goes to the PCM, which checks if the transmission's in park with the neutral safety switch. And then if it is, it goes to this relay over here, the starter relay, which gets constant power from fuse five, which is a 250 amp fuse. One side's grounded the entire time and 85 gives the voltage. Um, the computer gives the voltage if the crank request. So we see on the scan tool that this is not giving a voltage to pin 85. I just want to make sure that if I do give voltage here, will the car start or at least crank? Just to verify that wiring integrity is good in the starter and you know maybe it's seeing a problem and that's why it's not starting it. One thing I have to verify, which I forgot, is I have to see if the neutral safety switch, if it's showing in park. All right, so I'm gonna look on the scan tool now for that. All right, so are we in park? So it does show park over there. So definitely one signal saying we're in park, but is the computer, let's just go to the, let's go out and see park and neutral position switch. We're in park neutral. Now let's shift out. Now we're in gear. Now I'm in neutral, back, so yeah. Let me just try to start it in neutral. Nothing, back in park, nothing. Okay, so park neutral's good. What I have to do now is, I just wanna check the circuit quickly. All right, so here's the fuse box. Let's see. Starter relay. Micro relays, number two is the starter solenoid. That is this guy right here. Okay, this relay. 85 and 86 are these two. I'm gonna actually leave it half in. Now, all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give power to pin 85 with my test light. And if everything's good, it should crank. So I'm gonna give power right there. I don't know if it's 85 or 86, but we'll see. And there you go, the car is cranked. So we know the whole circuit's good on the starter. I don't have to check that. Okay, so what I wanna do now, since I'm seeing this difference between the PCM and the BCM, I wanna to try to reprogram them, see if there's an update on it. And I don't know if it's gonna help, but I'm pretty much, I don't have another idea. So I'm gonna try that first. All right, I'm gonna get set up for that. All right, I just have to go get my J box. I use the Cardac 3 for programming. We got it right here. All right, so here's my J box. I'm gonna plug it in instead of my scan tool. All right, that plugged in. Now this end goes into the laptop. All right, and now we just have to hope that GM software works. I'm gonna go to available and then let's hope it works all right seems like it's working so far okay connect vehicle select the car deck All right, that's the car, let's go to SPS2. Now, I'm not sure if we should program the PCM or the BCM or both, so I'm gonna first check on the PCM. It doesn't use a VIN slot until you actually start programming, so I could check the calibration files before that. Okay, so we're gonna reprogram next. It's gonna find all the controllers. We're gonna try the BCM. Body control module, programming. Well, it's programming and setup, so we'll do programming. I already have a maintainer on this car. Okay, 
So I want to proceed. Yes, it's not going to actually take a rinse slot yet. Okay. Next. You know, actually, it's all the same. If I push start programming, you can say it's going to reprogram the same calibration. So I'm going to click cancel. Let me first check the PCM. Okay, next. All right, it's also at the latest calibration. The question is if I want to do this anyway, just to try it. You know, let me check one thing before. Let me go back to all data, and I should have done this earlier. Let me see if I could find a TSP on this. Okay, I don't see it. Let me just search note crank and all that. I'll see if anything comes up. Intermittent engine note crank, intermittent exhaust camshaft signal. Maybe. Engine control mouse and intermittent exhaust crankshaft position sensor signal as soon as ignition is turned on. That is really cool. Hold on. So wait. Connect the schedule to the vehicle. Turn on ignition. Perform the diagnostic system check. Vehicle entity set. Observe one of the following. Active counter parameters for incrementing exhaust. Okay, let's check that out. Before we do anything further. Because that's really cool. That I've never seen before. Plug this. Plug back in my scan tool. Okay. Let's reconnect it. It says in engine data. We should look at what they call it. It was camshaft, right? I think it has its own section. Camshaft position actuator data. Zero RPM. There we go. Exhaust camshaft position, active counter. It's counting up. That is so cool. All right, this TSP just saved me. Um, this is our issue. I wonder if I could just unplug this and then the car would start. That is really, really cool. Okay. Um, let's see what the TSP says. Replace the exhaust catch position sensor. Okay, I'm gonna unplug it now just to see what happens. All right, let me find it. Uh, let's see, the exhaust is this side. I think it's this one right here. First over the All right, there's oil in here. All right, I think I'm plugging it. Let's go see now if the counter is not counting up. Yeah, it stopped counting right there. Let's shut this off and try to crank it. And it cranks. That is cool. All right, we're going to replace that sensor, and this thing should be fixed. All right, thanks for watching.